Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charters here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased technical analysis. And guys, the S&P 500 has been giving us a nice rinse and repeat type of day where it would break above my 369 level, go and hit that 370 to 371 zone. And they give us a false breakout that leads to an amazing move to the downside before it tries to reverse. Okay, you can see this was Friday's. This is a 15 minute chart here. This was Friday's price action. This is Monday's price action. This was today's price action. All of them. Look at that false breakout. This line right here, this is my 369 level. I'll make it pink. And you can see here, false breakout, false breakout, false breakout. Guys, I seriously love the false breakout setup as well as the false breakdown setup you look at here you know like i always say just know the levels know the setup and just trade it unbiasedly you know we got the false breakout here you can also see i had a three old uh 366 or 367 level this candle right here closed below 367 got a false breakdown setup for a level to level move no home runs level to level from you know so it recaptured 367 hit 369 you know that was a back test and go setup right here after this false breakout and it pushed all the way back down and had another false breakdown setup here where um the 362 level you know we lost the 362 level and it recaptured it intraday triggering a nice move up to 364.59 so about two dollar you know and 50 cent move and so far that 362 levels you know it held at the end of day so even on a trend day like today the overall trend was a downtrend and you know this false breakout was a very great trade setup but for all the counter trend traders out there even you know i know there's a lot of traders they like to trade against the the, the trend you know it, it, it's like high risk plays but there is a way that you can trade it where you can make money and like i always say if we're on a downtrend and we're breaking down support the best thing to do to, for calls or to go long or to try to play a reversal is when a previous support level is recaptured. You know what I mean? So this 367 level was a support level. It you know it failed, so that makes it a previous support level, and it recaptured. It gave us another a nice level level move. And same with 362, where it gave us a nice two dollar and fifty cent move. Like you know, if you're buying shares, two dollars and fifty cent isn't a lot. But if you're buying calls or doing contracts, you know, a two dollar and fifty cent move can you know can give you a decent percentage all right so let's go to the daily chart here that i want to talk to you guys about we got an outside daily candle all right if you guys don't know what an outside daily candle is it's when the current candle this one that i'm looking at today's candle the range of that candle engulfs the previous day's range okay so we got an outside daily candle. Now, if you guys remember from my uh, my weekend video, not this past weekend, but the weekend before that, I talked about the outside weekly candle that we had, okay? That was on the week of September 12th. This is right here, an outside weekly candle, and usually that's a sign of continuation of the trend. And as you can see on the weekly chart, it, it played out pretty well. So what we have here is an outside uh, daily candle, and it's a bearish one. All right, so there's no guarantee that we're going to drop more tomorrow. But guys, I'm looking at this chart and, you know, I'm not seeing anything really bullish. We lost a multi-year trend line, you know, and we've been we've tried a couple of days now to recapture that level. And all we got was false breakout that led to a very nice move to the downside, as you can see here on the intraday smaller time frame. Um, and now we got this outside daily candle which is a bearish one so i'm just seeing a lot of you know bearish signals okay i know the rsi is very overbought uh, excuse me is very oversold but remember the weekly chart it's not in the oversold territory just yet and even if it was an oversold territory you go back to like late april to late may you know spy was pretty in, in the in the oversold territory on the weekly chart from late april to late may and you can see you know, from from uh, late April here to late May, we just got more downside. So e even if the RSI was oversold, there's no reason to start, you know, looking at it like it's a buy signal. If you guys did that back in late, you know, April to late May, you would have got screwed on your calls. So all I'm saying is, 
for us to see a you know a sign of more upside we got to clear some critical resistant levels and that critical resistant level for me like i've been saying in the past videos is that multi-year trend line connecting september 2020 to october 2020 to june 2022 lows and we got that breakdown and it's been holding for three days straight so i cannot get bullish unless that level is recaptured all right can we get bounces from these lower levels possibly it's very possible all right but i'd rather not call a bottom i'd rather not call a bottom i'd rather not try to time it i'd rather wait for the perfect setup the false breakdown setup is what i'm referring to to enter calls to look for a reversal because false breakdowns and false breakouts you know this channel is dedicated to looking for trade setups for the viewers so that we can day trade it and possibly even swing trade it so i'm telling you I, you know as far as on the daily chart goals and swing trading calls i would feel more comfortable if we get a false breakdown setup of that multi-year trend line and until then I'm, i still believe bears are in control okay um so as long as we're below it i'm still thinking favoring more downside we can still chop because the last three trading days although the range has been very nice especially if you're a day trader we get some very nice intraday moves but overall we are chopping okay um so that's what could happen it can continue to chop some more in that nice range 370 ish down to 363 ish okay we did get to a new low down to 360.87 okay but we did we still didn't get the close below 363 we closed above 363 today that keeps spy in that chop zone that i had around 370 363 ish okay but if we can get that close below 363 and especially that 362 level the next big level critical level i'm watching is i'm looking at the weekly chart once again is that 200 week moving average the 200 week moving average currently at 358.2 ish okay i'm thinking we could go test that as long as this breakdown of the multi-year trend line holds it could take time though because it could take time though because it is a weekly chart it's not going to happen right away it could happen right away but we just never know my my thing is we just play it level to level okay so like i'm saying bold case bold, bold case scenario does not come in play until we can recapture a critical level a bottom is not in play or a temporary bottom cannot be considered in play until a critical level is recaptured that's just my opinion all right so we need to recapture 369 the 370 zone uh, 370 371 zone has held as resistant and gave a strong rejection for three trading days in a row now so obviously we need to clear that level above 371 i favor we gap fill got the gap fill at 373.4 and maybe more upside targets to 376 and then a, a fib level at 377 okay um you know you look at this candle all these candles these red candles that's like what one two three four five six that's like six down days in a row okay like i said don't call the bottom eventually and most of the time you guys been trading this market since the beginning of 2022 all right it doesn't go down forever there are very violent bear rallies that can happen okay short squeezes that can happen all right and they usually start you go back into the charts look back in the charts they usually begin with a critical resistant or you know clearing a critical resistant clearing or a previous support level recapturing there's no need to time it if it's truly the bottom there will be more time to trade or bet to the upside if it's truly the bottom all right there's no need to time it okay so uh let's see what happens at 363 as long as it holds the chop range continues okay we did have a false breakdown all right it could, could that could 360.8 be a temporary bottom we'll see what happens tomorrow okay above 371 i would be more uh, bullish because that would be a breakout of this chop range that's lasted three trading days in a row the evidence is right there right in front of us guys okay so today false breakdown of 363 let's see if that can lead us back to the upside of the, the of the range and maybe break out okay For, to get that relief rally because i know a lot of people want to see that relief rally and looking at that daily chart you bring up the bollinger bands you can see we're pretty overextended however today we actually closed within the lower bollinger band so that's not too bad you see the last you know friday and, and monday's trading we closed outside or the lower bollinger band but it's overextended so today's not too bad 
But like like I said, outside uh, daily candle, that's usually a bearish sign. I like to see that 200 week moving average get tested. But, you know, going to play it level to level. 363 holds. I'm watching those 366 to 367 zone. If that clears, that triggers or puts 369 back in play. The multi-year trend line. And let's see if we can break out of that 370 to 371 zone. All right. If not, bears are still in control, guys. And you can look at the triple Q as well. We got that outside daily candle. All right. And we that 276 level continues to not be able to hold. And as long as we're below 276, uh, you know, I'm bear bias. All right. That's my 50 percent retracement level from December 2018 lows to the November 2021 highs. So, OK, so let's see if 276 can clear and actually hold on the daily chart before we actually get a little short term bullish or favor a bull rally, uh, a bear rally. Excuse me. As long as 276 holds as resistant, I got 269.2 ish in my sights. OK, there is some support, of course, at 272. But if that fails, then we'll see 269 ish. All right. Not bullish unless it's above 276 and actually closes above that on the daily chart. Let's move on to Tesla. Well, ugly price action on Tesla. You know, we get some lovely price action for a while. Uh, well, this is what happened. I had a resistance level around 289 ish to 290 zone. OK, that is based on my 23.6 retracement level. OK, from uh, June low to to um, August high. OK, and it pretty much rejected from the 23.6 retracement level. There was a gap as well around 286 point four ish that was filled. OK, so it's looking like a back test and goal setup. I can't get too bullish unless Tesla can clear that resistance level at 289.3 ish, preferably above 290. All right. This also resisted at 284.4 ish and we close below that. As long as we are below those levels, I am bearish and I'm favoring. We go back and test 277.5 ish, possibly get lower. I do have a support around 273.4 and 270. I think we could break down those levels and possibly go test 263.8 ish. But my bearish sentiment will change if we can clear some resistant levels. Guys, let's end this with the option flow filtered for 500k premiums or above so 73 percent in the puts today it's not as bearish as the previous days but as we scroll down you see this is a big size over 12,000 in size but only 850k in premium so not something that sticks out to me now this one 7.2 million over 12,000 in size sweep order that's pretty aggressive once again for the october 21st date 346 is a strike price so big money is bearish right now okay we scroll down some more this is 3.2 million over 6,000 size now this one right here 5.7 million over 7,000 size that's worth looking at it's pretty aggressive date is uh september 30th so they will probably you know bullish in the short term but it's not working out for them right now but they are bullish in the short term that's something to watch out for but here's this one another october 21st date over 10,000 in size so you know not as short term as this one but this is overall bearish with some time on it. Okay, so big money still overall bearish on the triple Q. Uh, I, well, the spy now this is triple Q looking at triple Q here. Nothing really sticks out, but 65% uh, in the puts right there. Let's see Tesla. Anything sticks out to Uncle Charles? Not really. Okay, but overall bearish on Tesla as well. Okay, guys, so that's what I have for you guys today. Thank you for so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You want more content for Uncle Charters? Consider joining my Substack. I'll give you my morning analysis and all my levels that I'm watching before the market starts. And if you want some more content and be my best friend, join my community and truly be my nephew or niece. Join the Discord. I give you all my resources and all my best technical analysis throughout the day, before, during, and after the market. Other than that, peace. Thank you guys.